Hi everybody, I'm on a road trip for Sevenly and Virgin Mobile and I didn't plan on hitting Boulder, Colorado. I was here in 09 and had a great experience but just there wasn't time. And I started getting these tweets from this place in Boulder called the Tension House and they're pretty persistent. Yeah, and we don't mess around. You don't mess around. So yesterday was a holiday and you know a lot of places are closed but all the key staff came in and we I drove here and we had a little meeting and this is Chris and oh, yeah. what your position is I'm the program director here at Attention Homes so um, tell us a little bit about Attention Homes I, I was going to but let's hear from the okay sure sure so we've been around since 66 in Boulder providing services to this demographic called at-risk youth right whatever that means right um, helping people mostly young people and three years ago uh, we moved more from residential and program specific stuff to really trying to serve a need in the community that we identified with just a little bit of searching was a huge need that there were a lot of young people that were aging out of social services no resources and ending up on the streets and um, so we started this runaway and homeless youth shelter uh, where we do street outreach and drop in and that's where we are now in drop in and um, and overnight shelter for, for youth up to age 20. And, and we're loving it because we meet great, great young people all the time. Well, be in Boulder. Yeah. You know, you, you have some, it's a very progressive community. In, in some ways. It's a very yeah. affluent community. Uh -huh. um, but it's kind of doesn't want to acknowledge that there's homelessness here. No, so we served 550 young people last year. All right. So to not acknowledge that there's an issue with young people on the streets is ridiculous. It's um, crazy ridiculous because <laughs> I ridiculous. just went to the library yesterday yeah. and there was an army of travelers. Army. An army. A platoon. I, I mean, yeah. a platoon. And, you know, I've been to Portland and every place else, but I mean, there was uh, more than I've seen in a lot of other places, especially compared to the community. Yeah. But the, the bolder... I don't want to say hi hippie lifestyle. You could say hippie, yeah. You could say okay. hippie lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, I just sat a bunch of uh, uh, kids over here, and we're all eating leaves. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I've never done that. From the garden. I mean, it was from our garden. From the garden. Was, there was basil and Thai basil and look, look, Rick, look, licorice. You're right, mint. right. Yeah. You know, I, billions of tomatoes. I've been in 200 plus homeless shelters, and I've never been asked to eat mint and licorice and everything else. So well, that's full. You have not lived. Fully yet then, Mark, right. I will say. You haven't really had the so experience. So that's Boulder. It is Boulder. And it brings yep. people here that just, you know, are a little more free, spiritual, want to live on the streets, you know, that type thing. Yeah, and not just. You know, I want to say that yeah. affluent, some progressive town and all that loveliness is that there are also a lot of local families that are hurting. Yeah. You know, that um, Boulder, like any community, feels the hit economically that the nation is feeling. Yeah. And... Um, lack of resources is lack of resources. And so Big that exists time. in Boulder too. And yeah, I think that it's, it is lovely that, um, that this is a community that travelers come to. Yeah. Um, and it's got some rooted issues as well, right. as, you know, as far as um, people being on the street, people struggling to make it work. Right. And so thankfully it's a town, you know, this is the, it's the catch 22 is that it's a town where yes, that exists. Right. And in the same hand, there are a lot of people in this community that want to, that want to give back to right. the community and help out. So well, yeah, and juxtaposition. I, that's sort of lovely. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, 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 a couple of unique things that I've never seen any place else is that um, yesterday I went out and hand out socks yep. and I met a girl that was traveling and a couple other people and they complained that there's too they had to leave because they couldn't panhandle here sure there's, no, there's too not many. enough socks and there's not not enough resources and Absolutely. there's not a, you know there's too many that's people. what it is it's it's not a, not a, not enough resources there's too many coming here the other one that's very unique is that i see and somebody's told me they're called trustafarians trustafari yeah okay yeah. <laughs> where you have these rich kids that are coming down almost like homeless groupies hanging out with the homeless kids, like, you know, trying to piss off their parents or something. Or so I've never seen Or that. something. Or but something. I, th I think it's also about that um, people like connecting with people. Yeah. And I, when you have a community, whether it's this community or anywhere else, that when you have a group of people who are just doing their thing, 
you know, yeah. fuck the man or, you know, whatever that, whatever that looks like. I don't right. want to buy into right, right, I get it. societal bullshit. Um, that that's not exclusive to people who don't have resources. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? It, yeah. it could, might be fuck you mom and dad or right. whatever, but it, it just, also is this, you know, we're, we're a town where we can't deny yeah. that, you know, that we're, we're a weed friendly town. Yeah. We're a thoughtful, progressive town. There are a lot of intellects. Yeah. You walk around the library park and you know, what a lot of people see as a bunch of homeless people is a bunch of really creative, intelligent Great. people who are doing their thing, and yeah. right, and yeah. so whatever. And so it's this, like, misnomer right. everywhere. Let, let, for the sake of this conversation, we're going to try to keep this short. Okay. Some of you might not know the travelers, and the travelers are almost identifiable by uniform, usually together, have a brownish, usually with dogs, cats, pit bulls. Pit bulls? Uh, musical instruments. Um, a lot of them are out there really by choice. Some are just homeless kids that got caught up in it because it was a compete community. Yep. Um, and, you know, that's what you deal with here. So in your In the work, summertime. In the summertime. In the summertime. You deal a lot with of it. travelers in the summertime. Yeah. Yeah. And that presents a lot of unique uh, differences. And a different well, ways so, of- it does. It does. And, you know, one of the things that we're, we're our mission, what we're trying to do it, is very generically help people create a safe space for people to be, to get basic needs met. And that you can live in, in a house, in a van, in a tent, right. under a bush. And if you need a fucking sandwich, you need a sandwich. Right. Right. And so, we've, of course, we've got that, like we're doing that thing. But we also want to provide opportunity for people to have more choices for themselves. Yeah. And so the, the uniqueness of the traveler is that, well, they want to just have a sandwich or a place to chill or a place gone. to get some needs met. Yes, and so it's hard when you, you know, like we're gonna help people um, take the next step and like, well, that's not the reality for people that that's are choo- choosing to be on the That's what we want for them. That's what we want. That's what, that's what like, the adults or the system or the funders or the, you know what I mean? Right, that's right, the, right. That's the thing. And so um, I think one of the most, as far as services go, we don't, I don't give a shit if somebody's traveling or, Right. You know, from next door or, or whatever the deal is. That you people need a are sandwich, people, you, you need, need a sandwich. sandwich. Right, yeah. If you need socks, you need socks. Right. Um, if you need help finding resources, then you need help finding resources. Um, we have employees that need help finding resources, right? right. And that's right. what no. we live in, and so that's what it we is. We all do. Um, the uniqueness to the traveler is that um, I think it provides opportunity for the community to get engaged in realizing that this stigma, this perception of homelessness is, is wrong. Yeah. It's all broken. It's yeah. not. It's not some person who's got. Of course, there's there are people on the street with mental health issues. Yeah. There are people on the street with substance abuse and dependency issues. But <laughs> they're people. Huh. And so I it, say the just, soccer bombs hitting the pipe. You know the, the who lo- doesn't hit the pipe? The, the lawyers hitting. The, you know. Right. I mean, uh, the, my doctor the, the, probably. I'm sorry. You, you know. Every. You know. That, but, um, yeah. So I, you can't really, you know, when it when it comes to somebody that's going to the bathroom behind a dumpster in a McDonald's parking lot, let them have a beer. And I'm not advocating drug abuse or alcoholism. I'm just trying to put it into perspective. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? Well, that's the thing is that um, I don't I don't know if you've wandered around Boulder much. There's a public restroom. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you talk to people in this community. That you get to, people that are getting tickets for going to the restaurant. And, people that, and so when it comes down to like you're getting arrested for finding a place to urinate or having a beer. Oh my gosh, and and it's crazy. It's, we're it talk- is the, the criminalization. Is we're, we're we're talking to one girl, uh, traveler, just a moment ago, and she's going home to Montana or some state Someplace. because she's got to do three days yep. for a fine yep. that she can't pay. Right. So she's going into jail for a fine that she can't pay right. for a couple of days. And you, as far as taxpayer, you're paying that in a huge way. So having some place where travelers and homeless youth- People. People, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Having some place where people- Sorry about that. No, no, I get it, yeah. I get it. If you are to take my work and to put it into a sentence, yep. is that it really is all people should be treated the same. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And that's not the, that's not a bold new idea. <laughs> it's just one that doesn't seem to catch on to. Uh, right, well. exactly. <laughs> how do how do we how do we spread how do we spread that? Yeah. So you also have, you know, runaway kids, we you do. have a runaway shelter yep. and, and everything else. Um, we've gone a little long here because I, I really did want to talk about the travelers because it's unique, because people see them out there and they say, How can we help? How can we do something? Yep. Uh, you know, treat them just like anybody yeah, else. Yeah, don't fucking spit on them. How about that? 
There you go. Don't tell them to get a job. Right. You know, I mean, like, like, treat, treat people like people. Yeah, that's exactly. What, that's what people can do. Exactly. Yeah. I just came from Sock Place, and he was saying they're nicer than the other homeless kids. They have more the manners. Travelers? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I think there's, just, there's a perception that travelers are more evolved. Right? They were talking about people who uh, weren't school, left school, yeah. or finished school. And, and I, you, you know, you were we were talking earlier, and you were talking about choice. And I think choice is the big one as yeah. far as um, if I don't have choices, I get pretty frustrated. Yeah. And it's very tough to be compassionate towards other people if you're not experiencing compassion from other people. Right. And when you have a community, whether it's travelers or not, who are supportive of each other, who show each other compassion, and right. and well, then it's of course it's easier to be friendly right. and appreciative is a is a lovely word. Right, um, doesn't mean a whole lot. Okay, <laughs> the twenty million dollar question. And yeah, you, we love it, that one. And you've been doing this forever. I've been for. You're a teen helping teens, and now you're uh, right. right. I'm a, a, a um, old guy. How do we? really help kids how do we fix homeless youth well you I, say 20 million dollar questions that mean i have to give a 20 million dollar answer <laughs> that's up to you that's the trick right that's there. that's up to you how do we help young people yeah listen to them that's it it's it really is that simple that um sandwiches are sandwiches a shower is a shower a bed's a bed um but it, for too long we have as a society not empower young people enough to, to give us their voice and tell us what they need. Right. And if we listen to young people, they'll tell us how we help them. Yeah. And, and often very directly. Yeah. I but love that's it. hard for adults, adults to swallow. I right? know it. I know yeah. it. So this Count is Attention them. Homes. Yeah. There'll be a link to this place underneath. I love it. They're trying to talk me to come back in November because like here it's gotten nice and sunny and probably just ruined the total exposure of this video that I don't edit. And, and so, um, <laughs> but anyways, uh, they're trying to get me back here in November. We all know Colorado's nice and sunny like the sun just came out in November. Right? It'll be lovely in November, I assure you. Promise? Yeah. Above 60? Uh, so I, I love the people here. <laughs> they're amazing. They're helping people and support them. So thanks, thanks for supporting this road trip with Seven Lee and yeah. Virgin Mobile. And thanks for following along as I travel to D.C. Good luck, man. Thank you. <laughs>